Welcome back to TTHL. Today, we venture to the scenic town of Estes Park, Colorado. But before we start this episode, we wanted to take a moment and thank you for your support. By viewing our content and clicking on the like button, you truly make a difference. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming stories. Thank you. Let's begin our tale of the Stanley Hotel. Renowned as one of America's most infamous haunted destinations, this very hotel served as the inspiration for a celebrated author of horror and supernatural fiction novels. Nestled in the picturesque Estes Valley, surrounded by the majestic Rocky Mountains, the Stanley Hotel stands as a testament to its haunting reputation. Originally envisioned by Freeland Oscar Stanley, most commonly referred to as F.O. Stanley, the hotel now boasts 140 rooms. Freeland Stanley and his brother Francis are the masterminds behind the renowned Stanley Steamer motor car, which was manufactured and sold in Newton, Massachusetts from approximately 1898 to 1924. Freeland Stanley came to the Estes Valley in 1903, accompanied by his wife Flora, seeking an open-air cure for his tuberculosis. Prescribed by his physician, this treatment involved rest, fresh air, and exposure to cold or thin air. The small mountain town of Estes Park seemed the perfect spot for Freeland to begin his recovery. Remarkably, Stanley's health improved dramatically while spending time in the valley, and eventually he fell in love with the valley's beauty. In 1907, after a full recovery, Stanley found himself dissatisfied with the simple lodgings, leisurely activities, and laid-back social atmosphere of their newfound summer residence. Determined to transform Estes Park into a thriving resort town, Stanley embarked on a venture to construct the Stanley Hotel. This grand hotel boasted 48 rooms at the time and aimed to cater to the moderately affluent urbanites who constituted Stanley's social circle back in the eastern region, while also providing a haven for those seeking a therapeutic climate to alleviate their health conditions. The Stanley Hotel construction started in 1907 and it reached a completion on July 4, 1909. Originally intended as a lavish mountain getaway catering to privileged outdoor enthusiasts, the subsequent years would unravel an intriguing tale filled with mysteries and unexplained phenomena. Evidenced by countless accounts from both visitors and employees, ghostly encounters and peculiar incidents have firmly established the Stanley Hotel as one of America's most renowned haunted destinations. According to local legend, paranormal activity at the Stanley Hotel is said to have started in 1911, just two years after its opening. The focal point of these eerie encounters is room 217, which has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted rooms in the entire hotel. Tragically, during a power outage, a housekeeper named Elizabeth Wilson unintentionally caused a gas explosion on the hotel's second floor while attempting to light a gas lantern. Elizabeth was thrown back from the second floor to the first floor, but miraculously escaped life-threatening injuries. Other hotel staff members were also injured and had to be taken to the nearest hospital for treatment. Fortunately, none of the guests were harmed in the incident. Since this haunting event, numerous guests have shared accounts of strange incidents within Room 217. These occurrences include their personal belongings being mysteriously unpacked and arranged by an unseen presence. Some individuals have even claimed to witness a ghostly apparition of Elizabeth Wilson herself. In addition, unmarried couples have reported awakening to discover an unexplained cold you space between here. them. Additionally, Numerous guests have encountered bone-chilling phenomena that defy rational explanation. Some claim to have seen Freeland Stanley, the hotel's founder, hovering over employees at the check-in desk or standing around or behind the bar area. Others have witnessed the ethereal figure of Flora Stanley, Freeland's wife, gradually wandering the halls, appearing and disappearing in an instant. Some guests have reported hearing Flora playing the piano in the music room, which was a favorite hobby of hers. The fourth floor has also been a hotbed for paranormal activity. 
Initially, it served as accommodations for female employees and their children. Guests often share accounts of hearing sounds of children <laughs> running, laughing, giggling, and playing on this floor. One guest described their experience. As I walked down the dimly lit corridors of the fourth floor, the sound of children's <laughs> laughter echoed in my ears. But when I turned around, there was no one there. It sent shivers down my spine. In addition, specific rooms like 401, 407, and 418 have become magnets for paranormal encounters. Guests in these rooms have experienced phenomena, such as a closet door opening and shutting on its own, feeling someone sit on the bed without seeing anyone, and waking up in the dead of night to find their belongings rearranged with a chilling presence hovering over them. In room 428, visitors often report glimpses of a ghostly figure of a cowboy standing in the corner of the room or at the edge of their bed. They also have said to have heard heavy footsteps moving furniture around in the middle of the night. The concert hall, built as a gift for Flora from her husband, is also said to be haunted. Late night concerts fill the hall with enchanting notes long after the musicians have departed and the guests have retired to their rooms. Some believe it's Flora's spirit, ensuring her guests are entertained or preserving the hotel's timeless charm. The grand staircase, located in the main lobby, often referred to as the Vortex, is famous for its rumored paranormal transportation abilities and frequent apparitions. It is considered a paranormal portal brimming with spiritual energy. Many attribute the presence of numerous ghosts and lost spirits at the Stanley Hotel to this phenomena. There have been accounts of a mysterious feminine figure consistently appearing atop the staircase in photographs. In 2017, guests captured what appears to be children going up the grand staircase. The Stanley Hotel's renowned reputation for supernatural occurrences caught the attention of acclaimed horror novelist Stephen King in 1974. While working on a new novel, King visited the hotel, seeking additional inspiration. Despite the hotel being on its last day before closing for the winter, he and his wife Tabitha stayed in room 217. Though King did not encounter any supernatural phenomena during his stay, he credited the experience as heavily influencing his writing of The Shining, his successful psychological horror masterpiece published in 1977. The novel became one of his best sellers and was later adapted into a classic film by Stanley Kubrick. Notably, the Stanley Hotel itself was not used in the movie, as Kubrick found it not scary enough. Exterior shots were filmed at the Tiberline Lodge in Oregon, while interior shots were captured on a London soundstage. Today, the Stanley Hotel embraces its eerie legacy, offering ghost tours and paranormal investigations to those brave enough to confront the unknown. Some claim to have captured compelling evidence of the afterlife, including chilling EVP recordings and unexplained shadows lurking in the darkness. As we conclude our journey to the Stanley Hotel, one can't help but wonder what secrets lie within its walls. Is it a product of our imagination, or does something truly otherworldly reside here? One thing is for certain, the spirits of the past refuse to rest in peace. Thank you for joining us on this haunting journey through the Stanley Hotel. If you enjoyed this episode of TTHL, we kindly ask that you hit the like button, share it with your fellow horror enthusiasts, and subscribe for more spine-chilling tales. Until next time, we'll be here at the crossroads of light and shadow, searching for our next terrifying tale or haunted location. <laughs>